Joining me now is InfoWars DC correspondent Wayne Madsen of the WayneMadsenReport.com. Now, Wayne, welcome to the show. I wanted to get you on to talk about this bombshell article that you've got uh, involving the real scandal with Hillary Clinton. It's not just her private email server, but what was actually going on uh, around that email server. Um, you're saying that evidence shows Clinton was running a parallel outsourced State Department answerable only to her. Talk to me about this. Well, yes. When, <clears throat> you know, when this story first broke, I, I was wondering why in the world uh, did Mrs. Clinton not uh, just say, look, as the original classification authority uh, for uh, email, I determined this stuff was unclassified. As Secretary of State, she certainly had the authority to declassify uh, these emails, uh, you know, before the fact. Say so anything I use on my own per, uh, private server is automatically declassified. I worked in the State Department uh, Information System Security Branch and the Bureau of Diplomatic Security, and that would make sense. However, it dawned on me when I'm reading uh, about what she was using this system for and who she was communicating with, officials of the Clinton Foundation, her, her husband, and her daughter's private nonprofit foundation that's worth, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, and uh, a, a, an outfit called Tenio, which is a private consulting firm and investment company based in New York, uh, partly set up by a guy named Doug Band, who's the former uh, uh, close aide of Bill Clinton. And it, it's quite clear that what she was using this private email system for, and the server was located in Chappaqua, New York, uh, not even in, in, in her own home in, in D.C., uh, it, it was quite clear that this was being used uh, for off-the-books um, operations involving her own. Uh, uh, use of the State Department to further her husband's um, personal gain. That's the classic example of racketeering there, uh, soliciting the donations from foreign sources there, utilizing her position there as the secretary. Um, so talk to me a little bit about Tenio. Get into that. You're saying that Tenio is um, kind of a CIA-like group where they are actually planting some statements in the media, uh, offering statements to the media designed to heighten tensions there between NATO and Turkey. Uh, give us a little more information on Tenio. Well, it's, it's a very connected organization. They have as a member of their board of advisors, Bill Clinton, Tony Blair, and you have uh, officials of Tenio offering up all kinds of commentary on how bad Vladimir Putin is and how he's endangering the peace in the Middle East as if there has been any peace <laughs> in that part of the world. No, for, it's not the billions of dollars in arms that we're contracting yeah. with them. So, um, uh, so you've got an organization where you've got a lot of people involved. They've got offices in London. Um, then you've got the Clinton Foundation. You know, you look at insider uh, deals and, and you use the word racketeering, obviously, when you got Bill Clinton, who's the head of the Clinton Foundation, hiring Tenio as one of their uh, uh, um, um, clients, and he, at, at the same time, he's serving as a, a, a member of the advisory board of Tenio. I mean, that is classic insider racketeering. So he's giving contracts from his nonprofit uh, Clinton Foundation to Tenio, which is for profit, and he's serving as the head of the nonprofit, but he's um, a member of the board of advisors for the uh, profit-making company. Uh, we know that Hillary was using her position as Secretary of State to basically uh, uh, shake down foreign governments and foreign business leaders uh, for donations to the Clinton Foundation. And they've really done nothing when you look at, you know, what have they done for people? They were supposed to rebuild homes for the people in Haiti, that country that was devastated a few years ago by the earthquake. There, there, there's still people living in lean-tos and under plastic tarps mm -hmm. in Port-au-Prince and outside of Port-au-Prince. So, I, I, you know, we, you got you got one guy alone, a Canadian mining magnate named Frank Justra, who, who specializes in mining uranium. Uh, he gave the Clinton Foundation $31 million 
And in return, Clinton goes over to Kazakhstan to lobby for this this Canadian uh, tycoon to get mining rights uh, to mine uranium in Kazakhstan. Um, it, it's clear it's clear what's going on here with the the private uh, server. It was basically setting up. Oh, that the other thing I should have mentioned is Huma Abedin, right. who is of course married to um, uh, Anthony Weiner, the former New York congressman who. Um, um, basically distinguish himself as Carlos Danger online with his sexting messages to, <laughs> to women he didn't even know in many cases. Huma Abedin was being paid as a government employee by Hillary Clinton as a member of her State Department staff. At the same time, she's being paid as a consultant by Tenio, this private company that features very prominently in many of the Hillary Clinton emails. So it's quite clear that Huma Abedin was the uh, go-between between the official U.S. foreign policy apparatus, i.e. the State Department, and Tenio, which is the off-the-books, off-the-shelf uh, private U.S. foreign policy apparatus involving Hillary, Bill, uh, Chelsea clinton Mesvinsky, who's also uh, a member of the uh, board of directors of the Clinton Foundation, Huma Abedin, and you know, and then you get George Soros involved with the. He gives money to the, the Clinton Foundation. He's tied in closely with some of the people involved with Tenio. It's a nice little uh, racket, and uh, used to be in this country when the um, Justice Department would actually at least investigate uh, racketeering, and here we have a pretty a, a clear cut example of it. So do you think that the wiping of Mrs. Clinton's emails was just innocent? Or do you think this is the classic case of an intelligence operation, the destruction of evidence? Well, like I said, if Hillary Clinton had just come out and said, yeah, OK, I did have this for my convenience, but I had I had used my authority to declassify it, it, it probably would have been over. But at, like as with Watergate and all these other scandals, the cover up is worse than the original infraction or or a misdemeanor or crime, if you will. So, yeah, she she wipes the um, the the, the uh, uh, hard disk clean or orders it done. She doesn't obviously know much about uh, computers, and she's pretty much said that. And now we find out that uh, the backup company um, called Datto uh, stored the backups in the cloud, so they're all retrievable from the cloud. Um, and so this one is clearly not over. Uh, this scandal. And, you know, it's like Oliver North thought he was uh, deleting some of the um, emails uh, involving Iran-Contra by just hitting the delete button uh, on uh, this IBM prop system they had at the White House, yet it was all still uh, retrievable from the um, magnetic uh, media. And that's exactly how uh, the investigators got this information and, and used it to indict Oliver North and John Poindexter. And so this is almost a, a, a carbon copy of that, except Hillary, uh, you know, uh, thinks that she's going to be elected president as a result of this scandal, where most people with any uh, sense uh, would uh, drop out of the race, uh, not make it even worse, because she's got a lot of attention on her now. Right. She's and, got so many skeletons in her closet, and yet people continually make excuses for all the bones that keep falling out. Now, just, I guess, briefly in the last couple of minutes, um, we've heard stories of about $6 billion being misplaced from Clinton's State Department. And we've heard that before, $2.3 missing. Um, Donald Rumsfeld came out and announced that the day before 9-11. Are, are these shadow governments operating in, right before our eyes? Well, we've seen slush funds uh, over many, many decades in this country. You know, you go back to Ulysses S. Grant's administration and the whole credit mobilier scandal and uh, slush funds for railroad tycoons. Uh, yeah, I mean, we have laws that are supposed to prevent this type of thing from happening. But uh, when I was in the government, they used to call that creative accounting practices, you know, and uh, you, you could make money, you could move money around very creatively, uh, but it... it uh, you know, not all the time is that a, a legal uh, uh, mechanism that's used. And, uh, of course, we know there's been slush funds. There was slush funds during Watergate, right. during Iran-Contra, and, again, now with the Hillary scandal and the State Department, another slush fund.
Yeah, well, thank you so much, Wayne Madsen, WayneMadsenReport.com. Hillary for prison, 2016. <laughs> we'll talk oh, to you Hillary soon. Hillary for prison, yes. Yeah.